And we're reading from 1 Samuel chapter 3, starting with verse 1. This is what God's word says. Now the boy Samuel continued to serve, serving the Lord under Eli's supervision. The word from the Lord was rare in those days. Revelatory visions were infrequent. Eli's eyes had begun to fail, so he was unable to see well. At that time, he was lying down in his place. And the lamp of the Lord had not yet been extinguished. Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord as well. The ark of God was also there. The Lord called to Samuel, and he replied, Here I am. Then he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back and lie down. So he went back and lay down. The Lord again called Samuel. So Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I didn't call you, my son. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel a third time. So he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Eli then realized it was the Lord who was calling the Lord. So Eli said to Samuel, Go back and lie down. When he calls to you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went back and lay down in his place. Then the Lord came and stood nearby, calling as he had previously done, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel replied, Speak, for your servant is listening. The Lord said to Samuel, Look, I'm about to do something in Israel. When anyone hears about it, both of his ears will tingle. On that day I will carry out against Eli everything that I spoke about his house, from start to finish. You should tell him that I'm about to judge his house forever because of the sin that he knew about. For his sons were cursing God, and he did not rebuke them. Therefore I swore an oath to the house of Eli. The sin of the house of Eli can never be forgiven by sacrifice or by grain offering. So Samuel lay down until morning, and he opened the doors of the Lord's house, but Samuel was afraid to tell Eli about his vision. However, Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. He replied, Here I am. Eli said, What message did he speak to you? Don't conceal it from me. God will judge you severely if you conceal from me anything that he said to you. Samuel told him everything. He did not hold back anything from him. Eli said, The Lord will do what he pleases. Samuel continued to grow, and the Lord was with him. None of his prophecies fell to the ground unfulfilled. All Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, realized that Samuel was confirmed as a prophet of the Lord. Then the Lord again appeared in Shiloh, for it was in Shiloh that the Lord had revealed himself to Samuel through the word of the Lord. And Samuel revealed the word of the Lord to all Israel. You can maybe see. The title to have a sermon is God calls a prophet. To recap, as we, we've gone through here, we, we started out with Hannah begging God for a son, and her promise that if God gave her this son, that she would give the son back to God. God blessed her with a son, Samuel. She called him that because she had seen from the Lord a son. And so when Samuel was weaned, she gave him back to the Lord. And then the Lord blessed her with more children. Remember, since Hannah was barren, she didn't have children. She had Panina who was making fun of her and teasing her all the time. But then God blessed her because she blessed God. Then we read about how Eli's sons were not obeying God. They were abusing God's people. And I tell you that sermon, pimping the flock, because that's what they were doing. They were taking money and tithes and offerings and doing all kinds of things to people in the church that was not pleasing to God. And here we are now, we see that Samuel is growing in the Lord. We see Samuel's at a point in his life in which he is serving God and pleasing God in his service. See, prophets in the Old Testament were typically, if you read through the Old Testament from Samuel on, God spoke through prophets. Moses was a prophet. And so God used prophets and the prophetic word to speak to his people. Samuel really started to establish this method of God speaking. God hadn't spoken in a while. It says it right there in the word. God rarely spoke. In 
fact, the only time we, we see speak is when that man appeared to Eli to tell him what God was going to do. So when Samuel heard this voice, he didn't know it was God. Because he had never heard God's voice. So when, when he hears the voice, he's, he thought it was Eli. Because the Bible says he didn't know the Lord yet. The Lord wasn't speaking. See, what causes us not to hear from God? Sometimes it could be God is angry with us. Keep it real. I know God is a God of love, but God also can get angry at what we're doing. When we continue to live a life of sin, God will get angry, and then we can't hear from God anymore. But sometimes our ears may be plugged up. Sometimes God is speaking, but we're not hearing because we plugged our ears up. And even today with all the writing and all the preaching, and you mean you can get sermons on every media outlet there is and books everywhere. And we have the Bible now and tablets and smartphones and all this. Even today, there are a lot of people who don't hear God's voice because their ears have been plugged up. When you look across our country today, you can see pockets where folks are not listening to what God's voice is. As they, as they continue on and doing sin and continue calling wrong right and right wrong. As they continue to persecute Christians in this country for standing up for what they believe is right in the Bible. People aren't hearing from God. Sometimes folks in church aren't either. Because Eli and his sons weren't hearing. Hello? Don't think it's just non-church folks, but that's, that's those folks who don't go to church. Uh-huh. Sometimes you, we don't hear from God because we don't have our spiritual ears in tune. Sometimes we don't want to hear what God says. Say it. All right. Say that. Because God is telling us not to do something we really want to do even though we know it's wrong. Ooh, leave that alone. Huh. Ain't nobody in this church. That's that church down the street. We always do. We always do everything God tells us to do, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Put my hand down because I know. So Samuel, when he hears God's voice, doesn't realize it's God. Because he's never heard God's voice. The third time Eli, who hadn't been hearing God's voice lately either, Eli finally realizes, oh, this is God talking to Samuel. Thank God he finally realized it. Because he might have thought, what is for is crazy? People running in here like, you know. So Eli said, look, Next time, tell the Lord your servant hears you. Here's what I appreciate about Eli. With all the wrongs, see, see Eli didn't do a lot of right. Here's what he did right. He didn't get jealous of Samuel. When he realized that Samuel was hearing from God, he didn't get jealous because God was speaking to Samuel. Y'all know sometimes when folk hear from God and we don't, we get jealous. What God talking to them? Maybe because they're listening. Yeah. But he didn't get jealous. He realized it was God and he said, go back and tell God your servant is listening. God was patient with Samuel. He kept calling him. See, that's a good illustration for us. That God is patient with us. See, sometimes we think God is waiting to strike us dead. No, he's patient. He keeps calling us. Sometimes he keeps Oh, how many of y'all know God keeps calling you until you finally hear sometimes? How many of y'all know God has called several times and you knew it? Your, your, your grandma or mama was telling you you need to get your butt in church and you weren't listening. And finally one time you listened. And you came to church and God set you free. God is patient. He's long-suffering. He wants us to be saved. He wants to speak to us. He wants us to hear his voice. And we need to remember that. Don't get up, don't worry about God getting upset at everything you do. Understand he's patient, but understand his patience sometimes Man. can run out. Yes, sir. Don't keep messing up. Expect there's not going to be a consequence. There always is. But God is kind. He wants us to hear his words. He wants us to hear, hear what he has to say. He wants us to understand him. He wants to keep calling out to us. And he will. 
in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the New Testament talks about the Holy Spirit's job is to convict us. The Holy Spirit convicts us of sin, constantly reminds us, don't go there, don't do that, stop, stop. And you'll hear those little voices, and when you pay attention, you're good. And when you don't, you regret it. How many of y'all have not paid attention to God's voice and wish you had? And you realize, thank God, He's gracious and kind and patient. Because then He, you know, cleans you all up. Say, okay, go do it my way. And we'll be doing all right for a while, then something else happens. I guess an old ass nerve, and we know. God is not a drill sergeant, He's a general teacher. He's trying to get us to come back to Him, He's trying to woo us back to Him. He loves His creation and wants it to be that. And so He was there. To give God's word. And here's the thing. Again, I have to give Eli credit. God tells Samuel what he's going to do to Eli and his family. And Samuel didn't want to share the word. Samuel did not want to share the word. But Eli knew he had to hear it. How many of y'all like to hear tough words from God? You, know, you want to hear God past times. Everybody does it. See, understand that days where there's a lot of preaching that makes you feel good, but not a lot enough preaching that tells you what you need to do to get right. And Eli wasn't afraid of God's word. He understood that God's word would set him free. He understood that he needed God, no matter how tough the word was. They told Sam, don't you hide from me. You tell me what God said. Or God will deal with you harshly. That's the job of a preacher. When I preach a word and it steps on your toes, don't get mad at me. Because when God gives me the word, I'm going to tell you, sometimes I don't want to say it. Just like saying, oh, Lord, I may lose all my members I say that. But you know what? I have to say what God says to say. Because then I get held accountable if I don't do that. And that doesn't mean I spend my time beating up the church. No. But sometimes God has a point he wants to get across. Sometimes you have to tell people what they don't want to hear. That's it. Because they need to hear it. See, Jesus said the truth, when you know the truth, it'll set you free. But somebody's got to tell you the truth for you to know it. And Samuel has a great illustration here of the, what goes on in a, in a good preacher, in a good pastor's heart, when God gives him a hard word. Oh, Lord, I don't want to say that. But understand, i got to do what God tells me to do. And, and when you understand that, you do like Samuel did. Samuel didn't want to tell his father in the ministry, what was going to happen. And God's going to take y'all out. I'd just like to tell that to somebody you care about. You know, uh, <clears throat> all right, since so you want to hear it, <laughs> you know what God said. And what did Eli, he give me like credit? He said, well, mm, the Lord will do what he pleases. He understood that God has to do what he has to do. And we should be that way. When God corrects us, don't get all upset at God. If you did something wrong, mm -hmm. my children would do that. They do something wrong, get mad at me because they did something wrong. Wait a minute, I'll tell you that. What you mad about? Well, you spanked me. Yeah. You did something wrong. You took my phone away. Yeah, you did something wrong. Can't play your video game. Yeah, you did something wrong. Why are you mad at me? If you hadn't done what you did, You've done your homework, you cleaned up your room and done your dishes. Hello. That's us. Mm -hmm. Ain't mad at me. I'm mad at you. You get in the room slow, slam the door, and all huffy, and then see it sound the wrong to slam the door as I take the door off the I'm old school. All right, I'll say it. I do that for one of my children. I won't say which one. She's in college right now. Hey, why are you taking my door? This isn't your door. 
right? Huh. This is my door. When well, you slam it, you try to break my door. So I'm just going to take it off. Because, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm going to find your door. Uh -huh. You might not have for one. <laughs> There's consequences. Yeah. That's the way uh -huh. God is. And we have to remember that God loves us. God wants the best for us. It's like I love my children. I love y'all. Sometimes love hurts. Sometimes love means yes. I gotta correct you. I gotta come in and tell you, yes. no, you gotta stop doing it. And if you do it again, I'm gonna make sure you pay for it. Yes. Sometimes God has to do that so we wake up and realize I need to stop doing this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, some of us had to get to the bottom before we, we start listening to God. We have to lose everything before we start listening to God. We had to have things happen to us. Some folks got sent to prison before they started listening to God. Some folks still didn't listen after they got out. Hello? God has to keep, they keep wondering why they keep going through this because you ain't listening. God is trying to get a message to you. Listen to his message. God wants to save you. He wants to heal you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to do great things. But you need to listen to what he says. We, we are so blessed today. We have the word of God written in portable format. We have it in books. We got tablets, smartphones, and some of us still don't listen to God's word. Listen to his word. If he says don't do something, don't do it. Hello? That's what happened to Eli. Eli knew evil was happening in his household and didn't do anything to stop it. The word says if we spare the rod, we will spoil the child. It doesn't mean we abuse our children. It means we correct them so we don't spoil them. What happens to spoil food? What we do is spoil food. First of all, it stinks. Ooh, boy. Spoil people stink. And they usually get thrown out. Amen? How many of y'all keep spoiled food in your house? Well, you get that stuff out of your house as fast as you can. You don't want your children to be spoiled. God doesn't want his children to be spoiled. How many of y'all are God's children? I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. Whom God loves, he corrects. So when, and understand when God gives me a word that steps on your toes, he steps on my That's toes it. too. That's it. There are times I'm preaching and I, my sermon, mm, Lord Jesus. I just go, oh, God, I don't want to preach that. That's, mm, that's a little too close to home. Well, God says, well. Huh. Tell you. Mm -hmm. Preach it anyway. Mm. Get it right in your life and everybody else's life. See, God's word is, is, is special. It's precious. And, and, and the reason you need to hear his words is because we are so blessed to have a God that wants to talk to us. That wants to help us do right. That wants to guide us to get to heaven. We need to pay attention to him. See, here's the, the beautiful part about this. In the middle of mess in God's house, he rose up someone who would hear and deliver his word. So let you know this, that God's temple, God's church is never beyond help. It isn't. He will always raise somebody up to preach his word. Think about the AM church. The slaves needed somebody to rise up and preach a word to him. And who did he raise up? Richard Allen. Richard Allen was a slave that God worked to, to have get by his freedom and then start a whole church movement for other slaves and freed slaves. One of the biggest growth periods with Amy Church was right after the Civil War as they went with the Union Army through all the places that they were freeing up and they started planting churches in all these different areas so they could preach the gospel. That's phenomenal. God raises up people, men and women, to do his calling. God may be calling you to do that. I'm not ordained, Reverend. That's all right. That's who he uses most of the time. Folks that aren't ordained, but sometimes us ordained people too educated to listen. I said it. Yeah, let 
Y'all know folks were so educated, they're fools. God uses people that will hear his voice and listen. And sometimes parents, they'll use your children's voice. Yes, sir. Talk to you. Have y'all had that happen? I have. Hmm. One of my children has said something, I go, okay, that was God's. Hmm. Listen for his voice. Make sure that your ears are ready, ready and willing to hear what God has to say. He's speaking to you now. He's speaking to you today. He speaks to you all the time. Make sure you're ready to listen. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.